Mwanaji. Many thanks for keeping us company and if you just tuned in, this is Y254 News Highlights. It's about time now we move to our discussion Monday where we are looking at one year on after the handshake and we want to see if it was of any importance to any Kenyan out here and the political feud between NASA leader Raila Odinga and President Uhuru Kenyatta may have uh, solved the political uh, the stability of the nation but has brought the spot in political uh, fraternity because we have seen what has been happening in the recent past and uh, right about now I am joined by Daniel Orogo from my far left and he's a political analyst and then P Pidon Mushoki he's a community organizer and civic educator good evening gentlemen good evening. many thanks for coming and making it here now we want to see uh, one year on after the handshake, as a person, Python, has handshake helped you in any way? Uh, first of all, thank you, Elaine, uh, right. for having me. Um, I believe that uh, as a citizen of Kenya, one of the backbones of uh, development is peace, mm -hmm. that you can't have uh, any development. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't go about my business if there is uh, political instability mm -hmm. and if there is insecurity. So I think um, as a citizen, um, one of the virtues that I take with uh, that came from the handshake mm -hmm. uh, is the political stability uh, that came through. Mm -hmm. And with the dawn of the handshake, um, I can go about my business doing um, uh, my activities as I would like, uh, sure. which uh, was in pair uh, prior to the handshake. So right. I think for me, the biggest take is the political stability that was brought about by uh, the handshake. All right, Daniel, do you share the same opinion? Has the handshake helped you? Well, um, thanks, Hillary, for inviting me here again. Um, honestly speaking, as an individual, it might not have helped me directly as an individual um, because that is purely a political process uh, protected at a very high level. Uh, but relatively, compared to uh, before, you realize that um, transacting our businesses or doing something within the community or area we come from mm -hmm. requires relative stability, yeah. requires um, a relative peace. Mm -hmm. uh, it also required a level and a sense of you know, uh, security and a surety mm -hmm. in what uh, we are doing. So I think to that, mm -hmm. then um, um, the handshake or rather broadly what we call um, Building Bridges Initiative to a new nation mm -hmm. has a comparatively helped uh, restore the level of you know, economic stability, peace and, and security. Right. Yeah. All right, well we may all agree uh, the handshake stabilized the nation and uh, prevented it from going to anarchy, but now the, uh, the question comes in development. Now, is there a major project you can point out Python and say, through the handshake, we have this project, courtesy of the handshake. Uh, <coughs> I, I can't cite any project, but um, I think it's from the Kenya Bureau of Statistics. Mm -hmm. uh, they gave the statistics for last year, and they said that uh, the economy grew from, uh, I think, uh, 5 point something to 6%. And uh, the sectors that contributed to it, I think it was agriculture yeah. and construction. Mm -hmm. um, so I might not point uh, one or two projects, uh, but I think <coughs> the uh, surplus of uh, the tourists we had and also the level of uh, uh, foreign direct investment, I think they all um, added towards the growth of the economy. Yeah. So I can't really say there's this one real uh, project that I can point out, right. but I think generally mm -hmm. uh, it created an inducive environment um, uh, for tourism, whether it's agriculture, construction, mm -hmm. and I think it contributed generally to the growth uh, of the economy. All right. Uh, Daniel, you remember before the elections in 2017, earlier on, uh, there were many projects that were proposed by the Jubilee government, including uh, the Northern Collector Tunnel. And it brought a lot of problems because I remember the people from Muranga were told by uh, Nasa leader Ray Lodinga that uh, in, the, uh, uh, in future, Muranga will become a desert. And now he is in the government. What happened to that project that he was against and now he's in the government that had, had that proposal? What do you think will happen in the next maybe say two years? 
Well, uh, it's 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 not really to be fair um, uh, on him. He's been on public media saying that he's still in ODM and he's the leader of official opposition. Um, well, we we all know that um, the ninth. Uh, March last year, handshake you know, brought a closing working relationship between him and the president. But um, as the situation is right now, um, he is not declared that he is in the government. But then, uh, back to the question that you have asked, is by the fact that what it's different from you know uh, the issues that he is, he was flagging out when he was still in the opposition right. and um, northern collect out tunnel is, in, is one of it a number of issues uh, you know the euro bond and uh, so many things that he was unearthing by that time mm -hmm. uh, well right now i think he we could actually see that uh, the collector tunnel in Murang or in any other area was a very uh, a source of, of, of water supply, not only in that county but even in Nairobi. Majorly, actually. You could actually see right now that Nairobi, every Monday to Saturday, the, there are some mistakes that have really been seriously hit by the water shortage. Mm -hmm. And we are not attributing that, that it's probably from Moranga, but probably some water, water catchment areas that, uh, you know, we actually ask people to uh, conserve environment, including the Mao, right. uh, when, when he noted it around after uh, 2007, 2008. Uh, but right now that he is in the goodwill to work with the president and advise the president on a brotherhood platform right. it's quite important that uh, as as they have tea or as they have phone calls in the morning mm -hmm. quite to you know um, try to remind the government as the president is the head of the executive to remind him that you see when i was in opposition such issues i brought it up it's time that now we jointly follow them up and so that you know uh, it becomes a reality uh, but then also what you're asking is the fact that this has bring a lot of suspicion from different political camps and um, uh, and i think as we head there, it's 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 something that we should actually ima uh, put to question. Yeah. Uh, for example, the fight against graft, and all these things that have come uh, within this handshake. All right, yeah. all right, uh, Python. Uh, corruption, uh, like he just mentioned, is one of the impediments to development in any nation, and we know our country we have been struggling with this, uh, means for a long time now. But now the question is. The BBI that was formed, one of the agenda was to fight against corruption. At the moment, do you think the BBI is doing enough to ensure corruption has been fought in good faith, not targeting individuals like many people are crying out, a community is being targeted, a certain individual is being targeted. Do you think uh, the BBI is going to uh, bring to table a good report that at this point we have fought corruption? Um, I think we're on the right track. And when it comes to corruption, I don't think we are able to say that it's targeted to a few individuals. Uh, this is my own individual take, that um, the handshake to us, the citizens, it's working um, for our own betterment. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to politicians, mm -hmm. um, it, they, they, they have a different view because most of them have ambitions. True. And so to them, they don't see the handshake as something that has brought political stability it's a threat to them. Right. And so I've heard so many politicians saying that corruption is targeted to a few um, individuals or communities. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to um, public uh, resources, I don't think there's an issue of tribe or community or any person. Mm -hmm. um, each and every person, whether public or state officer, mm -hmm. should be ready to account for any monies that either have been embezzled or they have not been accounted for. Right. So I think we are on the right track. Um, from the DCI to the DPP, and I think it's um, uh, as we enjoy the political stability, let's also encourage the institutions uh, and give them time also to do their work. And I believe um, that at least we will have one one uh, conviction, one prosecution, mm -hmm. uh, if not two. So I think to me we are on the right track uh, in the fight against corruption. 
All right, let's talk about now the young people being involved in all this. Uh, Daniel, uh, a few times I've heard you here, uh, you say the youths were not majorly involved, and we can remember during the election period, every other time we see the youths being involved in propagating violence and uh, doing all manner of things. But now, uh, what is the position of youths at this point, considering we are not in the BBI team? <laughs> Well, well, yeah, it's 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 always a question that I I struggle to you know to bring to form. First of all, like you rightfully intimated, one, wherever there is a process of political election and the process of a campaign, there is a sense in which young people are always involved, either to try to plan for campaigners or try to market or try to you know uh, reach out to the politicians so that will sell them, and in that sense. Look at the caravans the young people have been having for, for these politicians. Look at who runs the social media sites for these politicians. Look at actually who comes up with popular music and pop music to campaign for these politicians. 90% is young people. And I don't know why each and every time we forget that when we go to campaign, we have to go with a written memorandum and ask them that once we successfully elect you to this leadership position, what is this written agreement that you're going to get through? None. The other problem that we are doing as a country is that for a very long time we've been enslaved and in, you know we're in these conclaves of ethnic, you know, ethnic biasness where a young person who has the similar problem, a Luo and a Kikuyu sleeping hungry each and every day, but finds it so easy to butcher one another during election because of tribe. That is one question we need to answer. The third is that the fact that there is no stronger youth political movement in this country that united young people. Mm. What we have is National Youth Council that is not political. So then, Building Bridges Initiative did not reward young people to be brought to fore among the 12 member committee. None is young. Who are there? They are there people like Senator Amos Waku who's, you know, exhausted their time. People like, you know, we can mention and mention and mention, but you realize the young people's energy and synergy and ideas mm -hmm. that are needed in Building Bridges Initiative is not there. Yeah. What we do is, you know, we are calling these hearing platforms where BBI is working in each and every county and making forums. That is where young people are even given a platform to address. But we never know. Even as we address, there is no feedback. Mm -hmm. So I think it is a short change. It is one of the issues that I see is a form of hypocrisy. And young people have been short in this country. Yeah. But when election is going to come, you're going to see uh, many of them many of them running in a platform of youth, youthful campaign. All right, Apito, <laughs> I hear it's at 12. Uh, gentlemen, uh, men, they are like uh, the 12 tribes of uh, Israel. But now, uh, what's your position as a youth? What do you feel? How have the youths been involved? Though in the team, we are out here, we are crying. Do you think they are hearing our cries? Um, so, so we have to change tact. And I agree with my brother Daniel. Mm -hmm. that, uh, so what do we do uh, if we are shortchanged? Right. I think we can't cry and complain and say, oh, we are shortchanged. Mm -hmm. I think if our voice is not heard by having a young people in the 12 or 14 member that task force. Mm -hmm. I think it's up to us uh, to use other avenues that are in place. We have many youth organizations, right. uh, we have uh, community youth groups, mm -hmm. uh, we have young parliamentarians association. I think they came out strongly saying that there was no one, no youth representation. Mm -hmm. And because the task force was mandated to come up, I think, with a way forward, uh, right. with the findings and the recommendation, mm -hmm. it's up to us, the young people, to see if our voices have been heard right. or if our views have been uh, um, in incorporated in those findings. I think issues like um, um, lack of national ethos, uh, you can't speak about ethos without um, engaging the young people. True. And so um, if we engage, as you said, in the county levels and uh, being or having the knowledge of where the public hearings are happening, mm -hmm. I think it's for us to go. Probably we may not have one person or two people, but I think individually we have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. Whether I'm a young person in Mombasa or Embu or Kisumu, mm -hmm. I need to know where these public hearings are mm -hmm. and I need to air my voice because my voice is your voice. My True. voice is Daniel's voice. Huh? Mm -hmm. And I think probably that's the only way that we can get even or try and see whether um, our views will be aired.
All right, we are running out of time, but we have to finish this. Daniel, we already have our young parliamentarians in the parliament. Uh, we have a few we can point, and one of them was a musician. And I hope that these people, when they are there, they can bring the issues of musicians and every other person out here. But then, do you think they are doing enough as far as BBI is concerned and as far as the youth of this country are concerned? You know, let me, let me say something. That we can't always, every time, say that we need to find a way of doing things. Mm -hmm. The only way we need to always make sure, if you are not in the table, you are never going to be in the menu as well. Let's, let's get this clear, that every time we miss out in these election positions, mm -hmm. the only time we only realize and say, now we need to find a way of hearing our voices. I'm telling you that there is an equal platform. If, if, if women are having equal platform to run with the politicians, young people must also have a platform to do that. Mm -hmm. And we don't find a way of saying, now we need to find. The Building Bridges Initiative ought to have been petitioned at the first because there is lack of inclusivity. Be why are we saying this? Whatever we appear in these forums, we are not going to make our voice be concrete because then there is no feedback that you're going to hold them accountable on the feedback. Mm -hmm. Moving forward, the young people that we're emulating has let this country down and I don't think anybody can call them mentors or people who are to be looked after. I don't think so. I think there is a sense in which they, they ought to be a refined you know, way in which we objectively begin to main, uh, make our ways in the mainstream political, economic and social system. Mm -hmm. We must begin to realize that, you know, we are not leaders of tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. Right. We are leaders of right now and we run an equal platform, a political position. Other than that, I think we are going to still cry foul and find a way of justifying that we need to find a strategy now that we are left out. I think this is not for me. All right, just one question on that area. We have cried for a long time. Who is going to put uh, this bell to this cut? Because we have the youths here. We have them inside. Peter, what do you think? Uh, <coughs> it takes momentum. We won't do it overnight. And mm -hmm. I agree with my brother. We need a youth movement that basically drives the youth agenda. Because right. we are the ones running social media and doing their strategic plans and everything. Eh? Mm -hmm. And so even with a few parliamentarians that we have, mm -hmm. probably we have not had their voice. Um, maybe when it comes to help and a few issues here and there. Mm -hmm. But it's going to take a while. I'm not promising that um, it's going to be overnight. Eh? Right. And so I think oh, um, for on our part, the parliamentarians are representing us, the young people, and I think it's only fair for them uh, to um, air the views that um, we, we would like them uh, aired, mm -hmm. especially in parliament, and issues regarding talent, regarding creativity, regarding sports and everything. So I can't really point a finger at them and say mm -hmm. uh, probably uh, they are not doing anything, mm -hmm. probably at their own level, because I understand leadership also comes with its own challenges, mm -hmm. probably at their own level. I think we have to give it to them. They vied and they, they are members of parliament. I think that's a step. I think the second step is just trying to uh, inspire, as he's saying, that we don't have role models. Eh? Mm -hmm. I think it's to inspire other young people right. uh, to vie uh, so that we can have many uh, young pa parliamentarians. I believe um, seldom will you find old people um, fighting for the, for the needs or for the issues of young people. Mm -hmm. I think it's for us young people to uh, engage and to start driving the narrative uh, in the areas of uh, youth agenda and youth issues. All right, we are out of time. I need your uh, recommendation very fast, 30 seconds, answering me this <laughs> question. <laughs> we had the resist movement. Where did it go? Is are things now stable as we wind up? What are we resisting on? <laughs> <laughs> What you remember the milk you were resisting? <laughs> you remember the networks you were saying you won't use this one? Yeah, you know, this is why I said some things are just like joking, you know, like political jokers mm -hmm. are, are everywhere. Mm -hmm. People are just, you know, toying with ideas. You could have even asked where was the money that was collected in these accounts before we would ask resist. Mm -hmm. People who donated, where did <laughs> this money money go to? Uh, but again, as, as, as you asked, when we indulge, and now this is a youth-friendly uh, TV, we are addressing young people. Mm -hmm. When we indulge in this kind of resistance, I, I hope that next time we, we begin to ask ourselves what is in stock for us mm -hmm. as young people. When we begin to resist companies and this thing, 
what change does it bring to my life as a young person mm -hmm. as opposed to promoting a certain political agenda to justify or to propel somebody else at the end of the day mm -hmm. hillary let me tell you uh, and this fast. is this is at the pain mm -hmm. I, I i think we began late so <laughs> if if they can add us a few minutes mm -hmm. okay when when we begin to you know like like i've said next time you realize that no life is worth being lost for a politician mm -hmm. because at the end of the day they will shake hands true like they did like they did and they have always done that Peter, on your final my yes. final words is as as young people mm -hmm. um we need to engage uh, whether one has the gift of leadership i encourage them to vie uh, whether one has a position or power let's use them for our own generation sure. um, the old parliamentarians and the old politicians they have lived their lives mm -hmm. i don't think they have the same passion as we have in seeing a changed society mm -hmm. and i think um, whether one is a parliamentarian whether one is in the government whether one is doing civic education mm -hmm. i think we must try all the avenues that we have so that we can come up with the solutions that we have so personally i think that um, we should not be misled by politicians mm -hmm. and it's time that uh, we had a youth manifesto and uh, and drive the agenda and see the changes that we want to see all right many thanks gentlemen for coming and sharing your sentiments now she has hit the kenyan airwaves with her music uh you want to stay up next for why mashari can know who i am talking about they have been my guest pithon mushoki and daniel orogo and my name is dereva hillary i will see you on a friday stay tuned <laughs>